this is Coffee with Timmy. Just the other day, I read that was a cartoon that said um, the older people get the more of the Bible reading they do. And it made me laugh because at the end, it also says they realize that they are closer to dying. <laughs> um, next year, I'm going to be reaching a milestone age wise. And it's really bothered me. I've been so up and down about it. I've actually been scared of um, reaching this age. It's almost like I want this year to stretch, you know, a little bit longer, even though I want it to end. So I've been very contradictory in my feelings and my thoughts. And I spoke to a friend of mine. If you don't have friends, you're losing. You're missing out on such a big thing. And you don't need many. I've said it so many times that I don't think I have more than 10 friends. I prob and that probably feels like a disservice to people who are my friends, if you understand what I mean. But I think if I really count, even everyone that I know, I think my friends probably not be more than 15. And I'm so happy about it because these are people I can count on, these are people I can relate to, these are people who know me. And I've met every one of them at different times of my life. But going back to this friend of mine. So she's been there and um, I'm glad I spoke to her because she said to me that she also went through the same thing. Somehow I knew that when I talk to this woman, she is going to break everything down for me. It's not the first time she's done this and she's not going to make me feel small or make me feel like my, my feelings. Oh gosh, I'm talking like my child now. Make me feel like my feelings were unjustified. And she didn't. We tend to look at, okay, I tend to look at, and I'm sure most of us do, the thing we call success as the things that society has deemed to be success for us. What is success? And I then had to ask myself, do I, am I successful? Because the bottom line of all of this feeling, it's really... How do I feel I have done in the years that I have lived? Have I been successful in, in any way? Or just have I been successful? And that, was the, and that was the crux of the matter. And if I change the word success is, if I don't look at success as the way the world has defined it for, for us, then I am successful. And if I can be content and be happy with my decision, and my definition of success, then it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. This took me to talking to other people. I asked them, um, different people, what success is. And another friend of mine said, it's peace and contentment. To him, success is peace and contentment. To be at peace with whatever is around us, with people, with his um, work, with his ministry, with his career, whatever it is that we're doing to be at peace and to be content. I think that's the problem with, um, with most of us, if not all of us. Being able to be content with what we have, not wanting more, just being happy with where we are, with what we have, it goes a very long way. And it's, sort of, it's difficult, isn't it, to not want something else. <laughs> And I realized that for, for now, like this year, people were asking me, what did I want for my birthday? And I realized I really didn't want a new thing in the sense that I am happy. I think I have everything that I want, but I would like it on a better level. So that also means I'm not content, isn't it? I mean, I have a car. And it's a good car. It takes me everywhere. It's an old car, but it takes me where I need to go. It doesn't break down. It's been a very faithful car. <laughs> but I would like a newer version. I would like a brand new car. Does that mean I'm not content? I would like to go on holidays, for example. Does that mean I'm not content with what I do during my vacation time? Um, I would like to wear, maybe I would like to wear designer brands more. Does that mean I'm not content? Because I'm not going around in rags. I, I don't think I look bad. 
I look good for my age. And um, so I, I, and then I asked other people as well. Someone else, two people actually said to, for them, success means they've achieved everything they've set out to. And for as long as they haven't achieved it, then they're not successful. And again, I look, these things that you set out for yourself, are they personal goals that came from your values or are they goals that have come from what the world says we should have done? You know, when you look at other people, and the truth is, it's so difficult not to look at other people. It's not so much as being envious of them or jealous of what they've accomplished. It's, but they are there. It's just they're there. You know, you all know other people who are your age and they've done this. People who are older and they've done that. And it's just not easy to not see them and to not compare yourself. So this wonderful woman that I spoke with, she also mentioned that um, in, a, in a class, in a classmate, in a group of her classmates, there are those who have, are going through stuff that when you hear it, you're just so happy you're not there. There are those who are sick. There are those who haven't made it to the age that I'm going to be by God's grace. There are those who, whose story are just so sad, so bad. There are those who are alive and they have not even done what you have done and you are complaining. And I think for me, the most important thing that she said to me, and she said it before as well, is the complaining part. Because when, because when you're not content, you're complaining. Whether you're complaining loudly, whether you're complaining inside yourself, you are complaining about not having done this, not having achieved this, not having done that. And it just brings more discontent, more dissatisfaction with your life. And it's, it becomes a circle. So I said to her, I'm going to get a grateful book. You know, just every day, I need to write in that book something that I'm grateful for. And I haven't done it. So it's been like four weeks since I spoke to her. Then this morning, um, I was listening to my pastor on this morning's devotion. And it was titled, The the blessing of opposition and he named like eight things that you can you can actually benefit from from opposition for me it was a it was a word induces it is a word induces and because wow i can't even say what the things that um, i'm going through the funny thing is the things that i'm going through are an indirect consequence of someone else's problem but it is affecting me and because of that, I realized that I haven't been positive as I should be in the things that I'm saying. I haven't been positive in my outlook and it needs to change because that will also bring discontent. It has brought discontent, not that it will bring it has brought discontent. So for anyone who is reaching a milestone, who is looking at something, are you turning 30? Are you turning 40? Are you turning 50? And you're looking at you thinking, I haven't done this, I haven't done that. I and all my friends have done ABC. I need us to remember, not just you, I'm talking to myself as well, that it's what we see on the surface. That's what our friends want us to see. And you, we don't know how some of them are getting through life. We don't know what they're looking at because there are people who are looking at you who think you are it or you are there. And if you just count our blessings, you know that song? Count your blessings, name them one by one. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Count our blessings, name them one by one. And even if it's the same blessing you're counting every day, it's a good one. If you're able to count your blessing in a day, it means you're alive, you're well, you can speak. You're not hooked to a hospital bed somewhere. And let's find contentment. I'm talking to myself as much as I'm talking to whoever is listening to us. Let's find contentment in our lives. Let's find contentment in our jobs. Let's find contentment in our family, in our home. Even that child that is giving you a problem. Just look at the child and think of the things that you love about them. They can't be 24-7 troublesome. There's got to be something at one time. 
let's just find happiness. Be joyful that we're not crying over our children. Be joyful that we're not burying our children. Be joyful that we're not in hospital, like I said before. Be joyful that we've got a job to go to. Be joyful that we've got a roof over our head. It might not be that mansion that you always wanted. Be joyful that you've got a car and you can drive yourself wherever you need to go. Be joyful that you've got Wi-Fi to listen to this. And be joyful that you are alive. Because that's the beginning of everything. The, the, the way we can, the only way we can complain about something is because we are alive to do it. If you're not alive, then nothing else matters. You're not here. Have a good weekend. Thank you for listening. It's been Coffee with Timmy.